Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take an updated look at the 3D Connection device support in 3D Coat. And I want to demonstrate why it actually matters. If you work inside of 3D Coat or any texture painting application, including Photoshop, you know how valuable a Wacom tablet is. In fact, it's practically irreplaceable. Now I want to make the case that a 3D Connection device is just as irreplaceable because in Photoshop, you can use a mouse up to a certain extent, but there are certain things that you just can't do in Photoshop without a Wacom stylus. Likewise, in 3D Coat, there are things you just can't do without a Wacom tablet as well. You can't sculpt properly without a Wacom tablet or paint properly. You could probably retopo with a mouse, that's fine. But in general, working inside of 3D Coat, a Wacom tablet is a must have. And having owned a space pilot for over 10 years, I would submit to you that a 3D connection device likewise is a must have. With the Space Mouse Enterprise, the number of customizable buttons enables the user to keep their hand off the keyboard and their focus on their model 95% of the time. When you include the Wacom tablet's eight customizable buttons and four touch ring assignments, to the 31 buttons on the Space Mouse Enterprise, you have a total of 43 different buttons at your command. As you'll see momentarily, we can also assign a four section or eight section radial menu to any of the buttons. If we just consider the 12 at the top, it multiplies the number of tools and hotkeys one can access to 48 or 96 respectively. This keeps each hand on their respective device and thus keeps your focus strictly on the viewport. For example, if I want to quickly switch to the paint workspace from the sculpt workspace, I can simply feel for this button. They're all contoured. I even have little tabs here where I can feel this middle button, likewise over here. And I can use marking menu gestures by just swiping, and I'm in the paint workspace. You notice my cursor is right here in the very same vicinity. Likewise, sculpt room, I'm ready to sculpt. Retopo room, same thing. I'm right here, ready to start working. Okay, so I'll go back to the scope workspace. You can assign eight sections, but I find that it's not as usable as the four section menus because with four section, you can see the label of your tool. The eight section, I guess for the sake of conserving space, you only see the icon. I asked on the forums if they could modify that to where you can see the text. Hopefully that will be forthcoming. But nonetheless, you have four and eight section pie menus that are simply not available in 3D Coat otherwise. And in 3D applications that have various pie menus of their own, you can map each of them to their own buttons and then use 3D Connections radial menus for other tools and functions. If you need a refresher, you can always hold down one of these buttons for more than a second and see the assignment. Again, you can see how these are contoured with the little buttons, just like on your Wacom tablet. So what are the major benefits aside from what I just mentioned? Well, number one, you can navigate smoothly along six different axes or any combination thereof while you're working. You can adjust the speed of the movement per axis. You can move left and right, forward and back, up and down. You can roll forward and backwards or left to right. Dominant axis means that whichever axis has the most pressure, it's going to be isolated to just that axis. So if you accidentally tilt while you're twisting, 3D Connection is assuming you're really wanting to just tilt and not twist or vice versa. In a second video, we will go over the configuration of our buttons. I want to quickly point out, you have view related buttons here, such as your quick view keys. And then you have your modifier keys on the left hand side, as well as one right here, your delete key. The space pilot that I had had six programmable buttons in an LCD screen, but it did not have the enter key, the delete key. It also did not have tab or the space bar. And a number of these view keys it did also did not have as well. And it did not have the radial menus. Another major benefit is that this two-handed workflow removes half the workload from your primary work hand. I'll demonstrate the difference starting with the old way of working with just one hand. 
you're having to work, stop, maybe rotate with the same working hand, work, and then you have to stop again, work, maybe rotate. So you're having to stop each time rather than holding the model with your opposite hand and working. I'll do it inside the viewport now. In 3D Coach, to navigate, it's very simple. You don't even have to remember any hotkeys. You can move your cursor outside the object, left mouse click and rotate. You can right mouse click outside the object to zoom and drag, and middle mouse click to pan. But when rotating, if I left mouse click, you can see how far away my cursor gets from the object. And then I have to stop and resume working. Again, you can see how far away my cursor gets. I may have to repeat some of the navigation functions multiple times to get into the position that I want and then resume working. So let me turn glossiness down. And another thing I like about this is, again, the delete key. It's right here by your puck, easy to feel for. And when you're working in the paint workspace, you'll use this all the time. Many occasions you're testing or you're working on one layer and you decide, you know what, I don't like that. I want to erase it. Instead of having to use the erase tool or instead of having to delete the layer and then create a new one, you can just simply hit the delete key. I don't even have to look away from the work that I'm doing. Let's go back to the scope room. Again, the old way of working, I want to take my hand off and I'll use the Alt key so you can navigate starting inside the model. You don't have to necessarily move it out if you hold down the Alt key, but even still look how far away my cursor gets. All right, so I'll sculpt. And let's choose a different tool here. Let's try clay. And then I have to stop, rotate. Stop, rotate. Again, I'm having to rotate or navigate with the same working hand. Now let's try it with a 3D connection device. And the thing I really like about it is, you know, even if you were working in one particular area, you can rotate and see it from different vantage points. all without having to stop. So let's go into the paint workspace. I'm gonna use another layer here to paint with, and I'll also paint more on convex. Let's switch that. So just our fall off a bit here. Choose a different brush. So you can see how efficient this is. I never have to stop. Okay, let's go uh, more on concave. Change the color. 
Let's adjust our opacity down a bit. Now turn symmetry off. So while I'm doing this, I just want to mention many people, include myself, do kind of a cost benefit analysis. And you might think, well, this is a price accessory. Do I really need that? This model is priced about the same as a typical Wacom Intuos Pro medium. It's priced practically the same. So if you think this is a worthwhile investment, this is too, because both of these are going to be used every second of every workday. So just think about that. And also, as I may have mentioned with the Space Pilot that I had, it worked perfectly without any flaw for well over a decade. And I finally decided to upgrade. I didn't need to mechanically. But again, these things are built to last. They're such a worthwhile investment. I think you'll find that out to be the case. Okay. In the next video, what we're going to do is we are going to look at configuring this device how to set up your radio menus and macros and things of that sort. So stay tuned and we will see you then.